on Monday, the 11th of January, 1965. Sydney teenagers Marianne Schmidt and Christine Sharrock decided to take Marianne's four youngest siblings, Peter, Trixie, Wolfgang and Norbert, to the city's Cronulla Beach for an outing. Marianne and Christine had a lot in common. They were both 15, their birthdays only weeks apart. They were neighbours in the suburb of West Ryde, and they had both lost fathers at a young age. Boarding the train at West Ryde Station at 8.30 a.m., the group arrived at Cronulla at around 11 o'clock. With the beach closed due to bad weather, they hung around the rocks at the southern end of the beach until seven-year-old Wolfgang pestered his older sister to supervise him in the shallow surf for a swim. The group decided to trek north towards Wanda Beach, hiding their bags amongst the rocks to be picked up on the way home. After following the older girls up the beach and the strong wind stinging their legs, the children decided they didn't want to go any further. Leaving the younger four children in a sheltered fold in the sand dunes at around one o'clock, Christine and Marianne told them, we'll go back to get the things. But mysteriously, the pair kept walking in the northerly direction towards Wanda Beach. After four hours, Christine and Marianne had not returned. At 5 p.m., the children retrieved their bags and returned home on the train. With the children's mother, Elizabeth, in hospital, recovering from surgery, at the news that Christine and Marianne had not returned from Cronulla, their elder sibling, Hans, went next door to advise Christine's grandmother of the situation. With night falling, police were notified. At around 2.30 p.m. the following day, 17-year-old Peter Smith was taking his three young cousins for a walk of the sand dunes inland of Wanda Beach when he approached a depression in the dunes. He observed what he thought looked like a department store mannequin, partially buried in the sand, until upon further inspection, he discovered that it was the body of a young female. Raising the alarm at the nearby Wanda Surf Club, police soon attended the scene to uncover not one, but two bodies, those of Christine Sharrock and Marianne Schmidt. Laid end to end and partially clothed, evidence suggested that Marianne had first been immobilized by a frenzied knife attack. Attempting to escape, Christine was chased down, hit over the head, stabbed repeatedly and dragged back. There had been an attempt to sexually assault both. Strangely, during the post-mortem examination of the bodies, the forensic pathologist determined that Christine Sharrock had a blood alcohol content of 0.15%, the equivalent of a glass of beer before her death. According to the Schmidt children, she had not consumed any alcohol at lunch. With little physical evidence to go on, Witness testimony would be vital for investigating detectives. Retracing the events of January 11 with the Schmidt children, Wolfgang made a startling claim that he had seen the girls walking with a male prior to their disappearance. He described the male as being a high school aged youth, having long blonde hair and generally looking like a surfer. The description, however, 
would be vague and increasingly inconsistent to the point that police were unable to produce a composite image of the suspect. Other witnesses that day simply saw Christine and Marianne walking towards Wanda, the last sightings of them alive. The best lead detectives could work on was that of the blonde-haired youth, theorising that the girls may have arranged to meet him in the sand dunes of Wanda, or that he stalked and attacked them there. But within a month, momentum was starting to fade from the investigation. The New South Wales government issued a £10,000 reward to no avail. Over the decades, a number of similar cases and suspects were nominated in connection to the deaths of Christine Sharrock and Marianne Schmidt at Wanda Beach. But for over half a century, the case remains unsolved. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.